The history of lingerie stretches back many centuries and is a reflection of fashion, social status, and emancipation of women. In ancient times, women used simple pieces of cloth or leather to cover their breasts and the area between their legs. However, with the development of civilization and culture, underwear for women began to play a more important role. In the Middle Ages and Renaissance, women wore corsets that shaped and defined the silhouette. Corsets were often very narrow and rigid, creating a high waist and lifting the chest. Women also wore knee pads and crinolines to create volume and shape under the dress. In the 19th century, the fashion for lingerie began to change. Corsets have become less rigid and more comfortable, and the shift of the center of gravity has changed the silhouette to a more natural and smooth one. At the end of the 19th century, underwear was invented, including women's underpants. In the 20th century, lingerie continued to evolve along with fashion and social changes. In the 1920s, the fashion for corsets began to decline, and women began to prefer loose and comfortable clothes. Reflecting emancipation and liberation from social restrictions, bikinis were invented in 1946 and have become a symbol of sexual freedom and courage. Nowadays, lingerie has a huge variety of styles, materials, and functions, from bras and briefs to corsets and sexy lingerie. It reflects each woman's individual preferences and style. Also, with the development of technologies and materials, linen has become more comfortable, functional, and stylish. The history of lingerie is a reflection of the evolution of fashion, social change, and the emancipation of women. It reflects the strength, style, and personality of every woman, as well as her right to choose and express herself through clothes. The history of lingerie begins with the times of ancient Greece and Rome. At that time, women wore simple linen bandages called quilts or sheets, which were tied around the body to support the chest. These headbands served as both a functional and decorative decoration. In the Middle Ages, lingerie became more sophisticated and refined. Clothes were very formal at that time and corsets were becoming more and more popular. Corsets helped to create the perfect body shape by lifting the chest and supporting the waist. They were made of stiff fabric or bone and fastened with lacing. Corsets were also decorated with embroidery, lace, and beads. In the 19th century, lingerie became less restrictive and more comfortable. Corsets softened, became more mobile, with an open back and formed the figure more easily. It was also the period when panties and overalls appeared, which were worn instead of quilted blankets. Crinolines appeared to create a voluminous silhouette and lighter skirts. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was a revolution in women's underwear. Corsets were gradually replaced by bras, which gave better breast support. New materials also began to appear, such as nylon, which offered lighter and stretchier underwear. Linen has also become increasingly diverse in design and style. Today, lingerie offers a wide range of models and styles, from delicate lace bras and panties to sports bras and shorts made of functional materials. Every woman can find something that suits her style and is comfortable. It is important to note that modern lingerie no longer restricts a woman, but helps her express her personality and sense of style. The history of underwear in general is full of funny shocking and even tragic episodes and certainly is not inferior in terms of the scale of changes in the history of the costume as a whole. Today, showing underwear is not even considered something out of the ordinary. If desired, a wealthy gentleman coming to an entertainment establishment can look at the dancing beauties whose nakedness is covered only by a pair of fig leaves. Lingerie shows from world-renowned designers have long been the norm. And the fashion for different colors and styles is changing even faster than the seasons. Meanwhile, such garments did not always serve as a means of seduction and for many centuries they existed separately and shamefully without frills, ribbons, and even more so without curious prying eyes. And the norms of morality of our distant ancestors sometimes took the most bizarre shapes. Ancient Egyptian beauties walked freely top lasso 
The ancient Egyptians were not at all shy about appearing topless. In public, their sundresses with straps made of thin fabric began just under the breast, completely exposing it. They were echoed by women from Crete, who seemed to consider the face-to-face -face strategy the most effective way of seduction. However, later the fair sex realized that the use of simple fabric designs can make the bust even more attractive. So there was a small ribbon that was tied under the chest to lift and emphasize it. In Greece, such a leather ribbon was called a strafian, and the Romans, who borrowed the idea, expanded the strip and provided it with lacing. Over time, a corset grew out of this ancient invention, which became an integral part of the ladies' wardrobe for many centuries. The men of ancient Egypt also did not bother to wear layered clothes, Often the only thing that covered their nakedness was a loincloth. There were also bandages that vaguely resembled modern underwear. The white part of the cloth covered the buttocks and was tied with the ends at the waist. And the narrower part was passed between the legs and fastened in a similar way. The same headbands are typical for ancient Greece of the Archaic Era and ancient Rome, where, however, they did not play an independent role of clothing, according to Cicero. Actors and speakers had to wear a loincloth under their outerwear before going on stage, thus showing respect for the dogmas of morality. Men's underwear can be seen on the 15th century fresco Fountain of Youth. The old people are still preparing to swim in the magical waters, while the newly appeared young men are already coming out of the fountain bowl. It is noteworthy that on both of them it is easy to see white men's underpants. The only open question is in which century this piece of underwear was used by the stronger sex for the first time. Sicilian mosaic of the 4th century with Roman women in swimsuits, but there is no clarity. On the issue of the date of appearance of the first lady's panties, the famous Sicilian mosaic of the 4th century depicts two Roman women in red sets resembling modern swimsuits in shape. However, the study of the issue shows that we are not looking at underwear at all but clothes for sports. In everyday life, the fair sex only bandaged their breasts and thighs to appear slimmer. Later, skirts, shirts, and pantaloons of a very original appearance were used as underwear. However, we have to admit that ladies did not wear anything like underpants until the 19th century. At the same time, the term underwear appeared before that. The clothes hidden under the upper dress were called undergarments in contrast to the light and functional devices of the ancient world. The linen of the Middle Ages looks more like full-fledged clothes. In Western Europe, linen trousers belted with a cord were common. In the early Middle Ages, bras reached their owners to the knees, but over time they shortened and by the 15th century they already resembled shorts. Peasants often used these underpants as an independent piece of clothing, for example, at work in the field. In addition, the outer dress, in principle, should not have hidden the bra entirely. No one was ashamed of their presence.